The Intel Core 2 was one of Intel's best processors. Overnight, it made obsolete the entire Pentium 4, Pentium D and Extreme Edition range of CPUs. Even the high-end Athlon 64 processors didn't have a chance. Here we have some historic benchmarks from Anantec and we can see the Core 2 processors leading the charts. Pricing was also very interesting. Here we have a snapshot of CPU prices from June of 2006. AMD was able to command a premium. They had the best CPUs and their top dual core processors cost up to 1000 Australian dollars. After the Core 2 launched, AMD had to heavily cut the prices on the CPUs. You could get the 4800 Plus X2 Athlon 64 for just over 300 Australian dollars. And a quick update on the Patreon page. We will go live on the 5th of September. From a historic perspective, the Core 2, there's no denying it's a fantastic CPU. But for me personally, it also holds a lot of good memories. I just arrived in Australia and I put together an Athlon 64 system and when the Core 2 launched and I was reading all the reviews, I just had to get one and I ended up buying the E6600. The Core 2 E6600 was sort of the value option at 2.4 gigahertz and the price of around 500 Australian dollars. It was amazing value. There was also the E6700, slightly higher clocked, and at the high end, the Core 2 Extreme X6800, which ran at 2.93 gigahertz with a fully unlocked multiplier. Our test system today is a G31 motherboard with four gigabytes of DDR2 memory in dual channel configuration. I was initially planning on using Windows XP, but I've done so many Windows XP projects recently. So let's try Windows Vista. This is Vista Home, the 64-bit version with Service Pack 2. And for the drivers, we're using once again the Snappy Driver Installer Origin. It identifies all the devices. The video card is a NVIDIA GeForce. It's a 9800 GT with one gigabyte of VRAM and the driver version is 177.83. In 3D Mark 2003, we're getting 34,822. In 05, we're getting 14,287. And in 06, we're getting 10,027. And here we have the usual benchmarks that I like to test on older computers. First up we have Far Cry and here we can see across all the resolutions we are basically bound by the CPU. We're getting 128.6 FPS at 640 by 480 and we're only losing 2 FPS at 1280 by 1024. In Doom 3 we can see the same picture around 144 FPS across all the resolutions. So the 9800 GT was a good pick to make sure we're not held back by the video card. Half-Life 2, a little bit more demanding. This is the modern Steam version, which has more advanced graphics. We're getting over 200 FPS at 640 by 480 and at 1280 by 1024, still 186.9 FPS. Fear is one of the more demanding old school games. Here we have the performance across the resolutions at 1280 by 1024. 179 FPS, still very playable. This is without the soft shadows. Let's enable soft shadows. The performance goes down a little bit, but the game is still extremely playable with 113 FPS on average at 1280 by 1024. Not a bad processor, but can it run Crisis? At first I tested with the very high preset, but that showed, uh, yeah, the machine was struggling a little bit. Setting the details too high. Yeah, the game runs much better, closer to the 60 FPS. So I would say the Core 2 E6600, yes, it can run Crisis. You just have to lower the details a little bit. And now let's have a look at some games. The first game I want to share and talk about is, of course, Battlefield 2. And yeah, a really interesting story. In Australia, we have websites like Whirlpool and OCAU, Overclockers Australia, and that was my go-to resource after having arrived in Australia. And I would yeah, learn 
all about the hardware and especially the the shops, the infrastructure. It was quite different to what you found in Europe. Uh, Australia has this uh, suburban sprawl. Without a car, it's very hard to actually get around. Public transportation is not that great compared to Europe. So after a while, I figured out a few decent computer stores. And yeah, there was an announcement. Pizza Hut ran a promotion buy pizzas and get a bundled game. They had Battlefield 2, they had Need for Speed Most Wanted and also some Sims game. And yeah, so of course I love pizza, I love video games, so I got Battlefield 2 and Need for Speed Most Wanted. And yeah, we, us beginners, playing Battlefield 2 with the Pizza Hut promotion, we were coined uh, pizza noobs, that was the nickname, because yeah, we flooded the servers and there were all these veterans and we had no idea what to do. So we just get slaughtered and everyone else, they uh, had a field fest. <laughs> they, they could level up, get easy kills and yeah, it was an interesting time. And later Battlefield 2142 launched, that was actually my preferred Battlefield, I actually really miss those games and I believe I believe you can still play these games uh, uh, in the modern era but they're a little bit hard to get going. Battlefield 2 at least I believe you can play it on a LAN to get back some of those happy memories. We're running the demo at 1024 with 768 all the details are maxed out and yeah it runs perfectly fine. And the other game I played on this machine is Painkiller. This is a game from 2004 so it's a little bit older compared to the launch date of the Core 2. It's developed by People Can Fly and out of Poland, a beautiful country. We're running the game at 1920 by 1080p. This is the GOG release. And as you know, I support GOG. Also, I'm affiliated. So in the video description, you can find links to buy some games. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps out with the channel. It's DRM free, so you copy the installer on a USB, you don't need internet. In fact, most of my projects are never connected to the internet. This one, everything was offline installing from USB and a USB hard drive for the games, the benchmarks and so on. So all the details of course are maxed out. I believe this game does support EAX, but at the moment I haven't got available a Creative Labs Sound Blaster card, so we're just using the onboard Realtek audio processor. I believe there's a story somewhere in this game, but yeah, not quite sure what happened. I just started playing and it goes straight into the action, very similar to Doom. Uh, it's an FPS game, lots of weapons, but I like sticking to the shotgun. It seems to be working really well. I did find myself running out of ammo quite a few times but you have um, some weapons with infinite ammo to get you out of tight situations and also it has some interesting bosses so that was yeah a nice little surprise some of them you can't really kill them you have to use some yeah your brain some logic some thinking and find some weak spots so so far I'm really enjoying this game I've played I think the first five or six levels or so. I will save the uh, save file and then continue it in later videos. It seems to support the widescreen resolution just fine, at least for me, I didn't encounter any difficulties. And also the music, if you're into heavy metal, yeah, you will enjoy it. It's got a really nice soundtrack. So all in all, Painkiller is definitely a game that is getting the thumbs up. The Release on GOG, the Black Edition, I believe has some expansion packs. And what I like about this game is you don't have to read the manual too much. Straight into the action, shoot everything that runs around. Very similar to Doom. So what is my verdict on the Core 2? Well, for starters, which Core 2? There are many different versions. Let's start with the E6600. This is the first Core 2 that I had back in the day. And yeah, it's a decent processor. You can pick this one up for a very low price. It has decent performance, but it's probably not the Core 2 I would recommend. I think you're better off with the E, I think it's the 
8200 or the 8400, one of those, they have more cache uh, built on a, on, a, on a smaller manufacturing process, so they consume less power and they also clocked much higher. Um, so unless you have a specific nostalgic reason for building one of the original Core 2 systems, I would skip this one and pick up one of the later ones that have much higher performance. Still, if the E6600 is the only processor you can get your hands on, this one is also very capable and there's lots of things you can do. In terms of software, I do believe Windows XP is the way to go. Um, you can use Windows Vista, but look, Windows Vista runs on more modern core CPUs that have even higher performance and the demand of those games, once they start supporting DirectX 10, yeah, the demands for the graphics for the video card, they quickly uh, go up and then you might find such a machine running out of steam. Finding Core 2 hardware on the used market should be fairly straightforward. At least that's what I'm seeing here in Australia. You might still get an old computer for free or find one if you go dumpster diving. But again, this depends totally on the region where you're from. Have a look around. But the Core 2 uh, parts, they seem to be right at the value range of the market at the moment with the older parts commanding a premium because they are retro and people uh, realize there's some value there and more modern hardware from the core architecture. Well, they can run Windows 10 and people use them for more modern tasks. So all in all, the Core 2 and specifically the E6600 does get the thumbs up. It's a fantastic processor, one of the best CPU lines that Intel produced. And yeah, I have very fond memories of the Core 2. And now I wanna hear from you. How was 2006 for you? Did you switch from the Athlon 64 to the Core 2 like I did? Or maybe you had a Pentium 4 or a Pentium D? I'm really interested. Or did you hold out for the AMD Phenom, which turned out to be a little bit of a disappointment? And yeah, maybe that's something we can look at in a future video. So really eager to hear from you. And that's it, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed and you want to see more videos about old computers to play classic games, please subscribe. Lots of videos coming in the near future. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.